Hey everyone, this video is on power loss during transmission of electricity. Power stations can produce electricity through different means. This includes the burning of coal, the use of wind farms and solar farms, and the conversion from nuclear energy into electrical energy. Power stations usually require large land to build, and that's why they're usually located relatively far away from metropolitan areas. You can see there are numerous power stations in remote regions of New South Wales, relatively far away from metropolitan areas in the central coast, in Sydney, and south of Sydney. As a result of their remote location, the distribution of electricity usually occurs over long distances. The main problem associated with power transmission is a loss of energy due to resistive heat production in the power lines. Power loss due to resistive heat production is dependent on the magnitude of current and the resistance of the power line itself. Specifically, power loss can be calculated by using this equation. Power loss equals to I squared, current squared, times by R, where R is the resistance of the power line in ohms. As a result of the power loss, there's always a voltage difference between the source and the destination of the power. In this case, this is the power between the power station, which produces the energy, and the substation, which receives the energy. This difference in voltage is often referred to as a voltage drop. When there's a larger voltage drop, there is a larger amount of energy lost during transmission. We can also use the voltage drop to calculate power loss, where power loss is equal to the square of the difference in voltage between the power station and the substation. So this is our voltage drop divided by the resistance of the power line. You can use either of the two equations depending on whether you know the current flowing through the power line or the voltage drop that's observed due to the power loss. By way of review, the electrical resistance R of a conductor is dependent on various factors. This includes the length of the conductor. Longer the conductor, the higher the resistance it has. It depends on the cross-sectional area of the conductor. Bigger the cross-section area, that is, thicker the wire, lower the resistance it has. The temperature. For metals, higher the temperature, higher the resistance. And also the conductivity or the intrinsic resistance of the material itself. Different materials such as copper versus aluminium, although they can both conduct electricity, they have different degrees of electrical resistance. We want to focus on the first factor, that is the length of the conductor, because as we discussed earlier, most power stations are located in remote regions quite far away from metropolitan areas which will receive the power. Long distance transmission of power is associated with a very long conductor length, which means the resistance of the transmission line is greatly increased due to the long distance it has to traverse. The inevitable power loss due to long distance transmission is where step up transformers come into play. A step up transformer increases the voltage in its secondary coils and decreases the current that flow through them. By way of review, for an ideal transformer, the electrical power input in the primary coils equals to the power output in the secondary coils. So if we increase the voltage across the secondary coils by using a step-up transformer, the current that's flowing through the secondary coils, that is the output of the transformer, will be greatly reduced because the secondary current is inversely proportional to the secondary voltage. And by reducing the current, the amount of energy that's converted into unwanted heat is decreased during transmission because the power loss over the power line is given by I squared R, where I is a current flowing through the transmission line after it has gone through the step-up transformer. Therefore, step-up transformers reduce power loss by decreasing the magnitude of current through the transmission power line. Alternatively, we can also use a second equation where power loss equals to the voltage drop squared divided by the resistance. When we have a smaller current, there's less power loss, and this is usually associated with a smaller voltage drop. 
it's important to distinguish that this V squared it is not the same voltage as the secondary voltage in my first equation. So although a step-up transformer increases the voltage, this is not the same voltage we need to substitute for the power loss formula. The V squared in this equation refers to the voltage drop. That is a difference in voltage between the power station and the destination which receives the power. Let's look at a specific example. The power output of a power station, it has a voltage of 10 kilovolts, that is 10,000 volts. Before this electrical energy of 10,000 volts is transmitted, a step-up transformer is used to greatly increase the voltage from 10,000 volts to 500,000 volts. When the voltage is increased, the magnitude of current that's flowing through the transmission wire is greatly reduced. And this is usually reduced by the same factor. That is, if the voltage here is increased by 50 times, the current going through the wire will also decrease by approximately 50 times as well. Since the power loss going through the transmission line is proportional to the square of the current flowing through it, when the current is reduced, the amount of energy that's transformed into heat as the current is flowing through the high voltage transmission line is greatly reduced. After electricity is transmitted over long distance and finally reaches a substation that is much closer to the user of this energy, a step down transformer is used to decrease the voltage. Since the distance between the substation and the final destination where the energy will be used is much shorter compared to the distance that needs to be traversed during the transmission stage, we no longer require high voltage as the resistance of the wires are much smaller compared to before. At the substation, decreasing the voltage is also more economical as the end users, such as our households, do not require the high voltage that was used from transmission. Right before the electrical energy is delivered to our households, another step-down transformer is usually used to further decrease the voltage to a safe value. In Australia, this is usually 240 volts. The low voltage during the distribution of power and its use in homes is much safer compared to the high voltage used during transmission. Both step-up and step-down transformers play an essential role in the transmission and distribution of electrical power. Step-down transformers are quite common in households as they enable a further reduction in voltage from the power points that we see in our wall sockets. These step-down transformers are often embedded in appliances and devices. You can find them in devices such as the chargers for your laptops and phones, small appliances such as toasters, hair dryers, and lamps. Alternatively, some larger appliances in households actually use a step-up transformer because the 240 volts from the power sockets are actually not enough to power these appliances. Two main examples of appliances that utilize a step-up transformer include refrigerators and televisions. In summary, both step-up and step-down transformers are used in different stages of the whole power transmission and distribution process. A step-up transformer is always used to greatly increase the voltage output from the power station before it is transmitted over long distances, and this is to minimize the amount of power converted to heat. At much smaller regional and local substations where the energy has already been transmitted over long distances, the voltage of the electricity is greatly decreased by using step-down transformers. And right before the power is used by small appliances in households, the voltage is further decreased by using smaller step-down transformers that are found in our devices. This concludes the video on power transmission and distribution.